happening, guys? Right. The subject of this lesson is going to be inter VLAN routing. Now, we have done inter VLAN routing before, about three, four weeks ago, and we did it using what's known as router on a stick. And with router on a stick, we use a router as a layer 3 device to allow the inter VLAN routing to work. We have a router sitting at the top of the trunk link with sub interfaces configured, and on those sub interfaces we set up the default gateways for the VLAN, it's VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 in this case. The problem with router on a stick is routers are relatively slow. What we'd like to do is we'd like to use switch, a layer 3 switch. A layer 3 switch is very fast in comparison to a router because the switch switches in hardware. Okay. This is how we would do it in industry really. So I'm going to move on and I'll show you what we're going to try to do today. Looks similar, but technically it's quite different. So we have a trunk link between the layer 3 switch and the layer 2 switch. And the trunk link is going to consist of two gigabit interfaces. We use the gigabit interfaces because they're faster, but we're going to bundle them together using a technology known as Ether Channel. This will give us even more speed. Okay. And we have access ports set up on the layer 2 switch going off to the two separate VLANs. What we will create on the layer 3 switch is what's known as a switch virtual interface. This takes the place of the sub interface on the router on a stick. And on the SVI, which is a logical interface, we'll actually put the IP addresses for the default gateways. Okay. I don't want to do too much theory because I've got handouts for the theory, which we can look at later. I want to go straight into the configuration now. What I'd like to do is I'd like somebody to volunteer, that would be you James, to fly the keyboard, he is the fastest on the keyboard. Okay, so if you could fire up Packet Tracer for me, please. I'll tell you exactly what we need to do. But if you can tap them in, tap the commands in, we'll be good to go. Okay, brilliant. First things first, we'll need a layer 3 switch. So we'll need a, a 3560 would be a good one. So if you go to the switches, drop a 3560 somewhere near the top. Brilliant. We'll have a layer 2 switch, we'll use a 2960. Fantastic. Uh, we'll have a couple of end devices, that will be standard PCs, so generic PCs, one to the left, one to the right at the bottom. First thing we'll do is we'll configure the uh, cabling now, so what's the type of cable to run between two switches? Crossover. Crossover. Same device on each end of the cable, nearly always it's going to be a crossover. So if we connect two crossovers between the gigabit interfaces on the two switches, that would be gigabit 01 to 01, 02 to 02 on the layer 3 and layer 2 switch. And normally that would cause a big problem because what we're doing is we're creating a loop. And at layer 2, loops are really, really bad things and we'd need spanning tree protocol to block one of the ports on one end of the cable to stop that loop from occurring. We're not going to have that problem because we're going to bundle these two gigabit interfaces together into what's known as an ether channel. Okay, uh, we'd like to connect the PCs to the switch type of cable. PC to switch. Anybody? Straight through. Straight through, brilliant. Okay, so we're going to have straight through cables going from the left PC, which is in VLAN 10, to Fast Ethernet 010 on the switch. Brilliant. And the right one, which is in VLAN 20, to Fast Ethernet 020. And we can put them in any port on the switch. I'm just doing that so as I remember what the ports going to be because it's the same as the VLAN number. Fantastic. Okay, so this will be the 192.168.10 subnet, VLAN 10. This will be the 192.168.20 subnet, VLAN 20. Okay, let's go into the layer 3 switch at the top. First thing you should always do is give it a host name so as we know what device we're in. So we'll do an enable, conf t, we'll give it a host name, whatever you like, really. Great job. Uh, we'll make sure that it's running as a layer 3 switch. Currently it's a layer 2 switch. We want it to work at layer 3, so we'll type IP routing. Okay, fantastic. Um, and now we will set up the Ether channel. So to set up the Ether channel, we want to go into both gigabit interfaces at the same time. We can do that with the interface range command. So interface range, gigabit 01, space hyphen, space 2. Great job. The space is either side of the hyphen are important. Anything we do now in this mode will apply to both of those gigabit interfaces. So we need to type channel group, so it's channel hyphen group, and then a number, one, mode, and we can see what follows that. How would you see what follows that command? Question mark. 
question mark. So we'll put space question mark, we'll see what modes we've got. Uh, we just want to set up an ether channel. We don't want to worry about anything else. So enable ether channel only, mode on. Okay, we'll go for that. All the interfaces have now been bundled together into an ether channel. This will have created a virtual interface called port channel one. Okay. In fact, if you do a uh, control Z, the show IP interface brief, we can look at the interfaces. And if we use the space bar to pan all the way down, we can see there's a port channel one configured. We'll make that trunk link in a little while. Now we'll go to switch two, and we'll set the ether channel up on the other end. So you've done it once now, so we should be quicker. Enable, conf t, we'll give it a host name. Switch two, excellent. Interface gigabit, zero, one, space like space two. Okay, it doesn't like that. Can you just show IP interface brief, just to see what interfaces we've got on there? Zero one, zero two, should should have took it. Interface range, missed the range word out. Conf T, interface range, gigabit zero one, space type and space zero two. That's it, the range makes all the difference. Okay. Um, can you remember the commands, guys? What's the first command? Channel. Channel group. Channel group, one, mode, on. Okay, go for it. We now have an ether channel. If you can do a control Z, the command to show the ether channel is show ether channel summary. Excellent. Channel's there, it's up, ports are in. Super, all working, all running. Layer two ether channel. We now need to turn that into a trunk link. So we'll go on to switch one, we'll do it from that end. And we'll turn that port channel into a trunk link. So conf T. We need to go into the interface, interface port channel 1. And we'll do a switch port, trunk, encapsulation. We'll set the encapsulation, question mark, dot 1Q. This particular switch is new enough to only have dot 1Q, which is the industry standard encapsulation for VLANs. Some older switches will have ISL as well, so this is good. We'll set it to dot 1Q. Switch port mode trunk. That tells it to be a trunk link, so all of the VLANs will go through it. And we'll do a switch port no negotiate. That will switch off what's known as dynamic trunking protocol, where it tries to negotiate the same state as what's on the other end. Oh, you're a trunk, I'll be a trunk too, that type of thing. Okay, brilliant. While we're here, uh, no, actually, we're going to the other switch. We'll make sure that's a trunk link as well. So if you could do the same thing on the other switch, please, James. Pop T into the port channel, port one, port channel one. Brilliant. Uh, switchboard mode trunk. Switchboard no negotiate. That's a very basic switch, 2960, so we didn't need to do the switchboard trunk encapsulation dot one cube, because it only does dot one cube. That's going. Um, control C, control Z, I should say. Show interface trunk. Yep, port channel one is a trunk. It's allowing all the VLANs in it. Everything's good to go. We now need to go back up into the layer 3 switch and create the VLANs. Now you will have done this a few weeks ago. So how do we create VLANs? What's the first thing we need to do? Anybody? To create a VLAN. VLAN and then the number. VLAN and then the number. So VLAN 10, enter, question mark, and we'll just give it a name. So we'll say name sales. Perfect. You could do the same for VLAN 20 and call it research, that would be great. So we've created the VLANs, you must do that first before you create the SVIs. And now we'll create the SVIs. Okay, um, interface VLAN 10. Okay, this is creating an SVI, switch virtual interface for that VLAN. We'll give that the IP address that will be the default gateway for VLAN 10. That's 192.168.10.0 with a slash 24 mask. What's the highest usable IP address? 254. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and we need the submit mask as well. So, slash 24 submit mask. Perfect. If you could do the same thing for VLAN 20, just use the up arrow. Excellent. Okay. Third octet just needs to be changed to 20. All good to go. The use of the up arrow speeds things up. Superb.
Um, all we need to do now is set up VTP, VLAN trunking protocol, that will send the VLANs down to the other switch. So uh, VTP mode server, top switch will be the server. Uh, VTP domain, Cisco, we'll set a domain name on it. And for security, we'll set a VTP password. We'll have a guess, VTP password, beautiful. No November, super. Okay. If we go down to the layer two switch, uh, we'll do a VTP mode client, VTP domain Cisco, match the domain on the other side, and same password. Super. What's the command we use to show VLANs? So we show VLAN root. Show VLAN brief. Okay, show VLAN brief. Let's see what we've got. Great. VLAN 10 and 20 are on this switch. We did not create them on this switch. They were created on the other switch. They went down the trunk link because of VTP. But you'll notice we do not have any ports in those VLANs. So we now need to put port 10 into VLAN 10 and port 20 into VLAN 20. Now to do that, you guys would have already done this. So configure terminal. What do we have? We have switchboard mode, trunk. What's the other one? Access. Switch access. Mode. Switch port mode access. So, interface VLAN 10. We want to make it an access VLAN. Switch port mode access. Oh, oh no, sorry. My mm. fault. Not interface VLAN 10. Can you do a no interface VLAN 10? Get rid of that. Um, interface fast Ethernet 010. We want to put the physical interface fast Ethernet 010 into VLAN 10. So interface fast Ethernet 010. Now switchboard mode access. And then we need to make sure it accesses VLAN 10. So what would that be? Switchboard access VLAN 10. Switchboard access VLAN 10. Perfect. And if you could do the same thing for VLAN 20, please. We don't have DHCP running on the top switch. Now I know you guys know how to do DHCP, so I'm going to leave you guys to do this one. James, yep. could you put DHCP ports on the top switch, please? Yep. Oh. 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 is a good name. Right. Um, we've got network. Network. What's it say? Table. The question mark will save your life in the real world. If you're not entirely sure about something, use your question mark. So, we're advertising network 10, uh, 192.168.10.0, and we're giving the highest IP address as the default router. Oh, the that. first line gives out the IP address and the subnet mask. The second line gives out the default gateway. Okay. You do the same thing, please, for VLAN 20. Yeah, yeah. Only difference being, of course, it's the 192.168.20.0 subnet. Perfect. Right. Now there is a command show IP DHCP binding, which will show if any VLAN, uh, if any IP addresses have been handed out to clients. Not at the moment. So if we go into our clients now, if everything's worked properly, what do we need to do? IP config, give it a whirl, see if it works. Yes. 192.168.10.1, the first IP address in VLAN 10, and it has got the default gateway. We could do the same thing with the other PC. This should get, what should this get? 20.1. 20.1, yeah, that's cool. That's worked. We go into the layer 3 switch, we do a show IP DHCP binding. We can see the two VLANs. Last thing to test, see if inter VLAN routing is working properly, we can go into the right hand PC, and do a ping to the left-hand PC. So ping. Superb. Fingers crossed. Seems to be taking a long time. Superb. Now we lost the first packet. Anybody know why we lost the first packet? Oh. Oh. Address resolution protocol. 
If we do the ping again, we should get all four. Yep. Superb. Well done, guys. Good work. Confirm.